let me ask you something. Have you ever taken a walk outside, felt the sun against your skin, the air on your face? This is the miracle you're a part of. And for a short time, this is your world. Live every minute like it's gold. Treat it like the miracle that it is. Let your passion be the spark that sets people's imaginations ablaze. Because the time will come when that's all gone, when your ride is up. And while you have moved on, your legacy will remain. What you did to leave this place better than when you found it. So my advice to you is to find out what makes you thrive, what you live for, and commit. With everything that you are, commit. Because there's never a good reason to hold captive the gifts that you bring. There's never a good reason to smother your fire. Let it spread. Let it bring life to those who need it most. Everything good starts small. Make the decision to turn a dream into a reality, a spark into a fire. And no one can do that but you. All things of value come with a cost. And this cost, it's essential because without it, there's no triumph. There's no victory. It's what separates out those who really want something, the determined. Why do triathletes compete? Why do rowers row, runners run? At a competitive level, it certainly isn't because it feels good physically. You know, it's quite the opposite. They endure a lot of rough situations, a lot of painful training, because of a tiny light at the end of the tunnel. And that light is how you build upon your self-worth. It's how you define what you're capable of. And success cannot come to be without adversity. How you handle yourself in those adverse situations, that is what defines a person. That is how you build your legacy. There will come a time when it hurts, when you have to ask yourself if it's worth it and consciously avoid quitting and turning to an easier approach, remember, anyone can run downhill, not many people can run up. And the interesting thing is that that trophy is usually at the top. Be careful how you conceptualize the word hell, because hell implies that the suffering will never end, that it's the ultimate pain. Three things. One, you can always be worse off than you are. Two, suffering is temporary. And three, when you wake up tomorrow, having given up will be far more painful than anything else you could have done. Everything in life is temporary. There's a quote that's got me through many tough times in my life. And it's that pain is temporary, but quitting is forever. Oh, and how true that is. I can still remember the times in my life where I know I had more to give. That stays with you. But how bad your 2K test hurt, how bad you wanted to sleep before a final exam, the pain in your body during the final stretch of a race, that all dissipates. That becomes pretty meaningless looking back. It's the results that matter. It's the results you remember. Because when the hurt is over, right, the struggle's gone, you either did something great or you didn't. That's when things fall into place. The hell you experienced was simply a vehicle taking you to your destination. So being that you only live once, that you're fortunate enough to have an opportunity to do something significant, why not make it hurt? Rise above what's uncomfortable and see the big picture. Ride it out. Because when all is said and done, the guy who gives more when it hurts gets more when it's over. Good question. At what age should one give up on their dream? Never. 
is Goethe said this, Henry Ford said this, Rockefeller said this, you're only as young or as old as your dreams. And as long as you still have dreams and visions and goals, they keep you young. It's the most amazing darn thing. One of the great stories is the story of Kentucky Fried Chicken. Once upon a time, there was a little boy named Harlan, and Harlan was taught by his mother a special recipe down south in the United States on how to make chicken. When he grew up, he got a job as a short order cook in a small cafe, and he asked his boss if his boss would be interested in this chicken recipe. And his boss said, sure, throw it together, see what the people say. Turned out that everybody liked this special chicken recipe with all these secret herbs and spices. Well, for the rest of his career, right up till he was 65 years old, he either worked in little cafes or sometimes he owned a little cafe. When he was 65, he had a little cafe and he was making his chicken and he had people coming from all around to eat his chicken. And the highways department built a highway past his little restaurant, his little chicken place, and put him out of business. They cut off the road so nobody could get to it. About the same time, he received a Social Security check, his first Social Security check at the age of 65. And he became angry. He said, I'm 65 years old, but I'm not ready to give up on my dreams. What do I have to sell? And he realized the one thing that had kept him going all those years, the mainstay of his little career was his mother's recipe of 17 or 18 herbs and spices. So he put them together in little bags, one bag per chicken, and he put his pots and pans in the back. of his old car and he started driving up and down the eastern seaboard going from cafe to cafe to cafe to ask them if they would pay him five cents a bag for his magical combination of herbs and spices. He called on more than 1,000 restaurants sleeping in his car week after week and finally he came across a little restaurant in Toronto that agreed to pay him five cents a bag for his herbs and spices this is back in the 60s and because of exchange controls, they had to give the money to the Red Cross. That was the beginning of the Kentucky Fried Chicken Empire. We began to sell this recipe more and more. People began to put it on their signs. A major corporation came along and said, we could make a real business of this. So they embraced him. They built the franchise. They made him one of the best known people in the world. When he died some years later, he was worth more than $50 million because he never gave up on his dreams. So I don't know if you're 65 and broke and living in your car with pots and pans with no money, but wherever you are, you never give up on your dream. You can have all the products and services and technical abilities and even an MBA degree, but if you don't have your mind right, then you won't succeed in business. And what we find, and we talk to thousands of people, is the most important thing you can have is self-confidence. Self-confidence and self-esteem. Self-confidence means you believe you can do it, and self-esteem means you, that you like yourself. And we encourage people to say all the time, I like myself, I like myself, I can do it. I can do anything I put my mind to. And wonderfully enough, you do become what you think about most of the time. You also become what you say to yourself most of the time. So you find that really successful people talk to themselves in a positive and upbeat way all the time. Now the third element that is so important in terms of the psychology of success is responsibility. And that means that you accept complete responsibility for yourself and for your business and for everything that happens. You see, the big problem in our world today is people are trying to blame other people, blame the economy, blame the government, blame the competition. 
the t strong people always say, I am responsible. I'm respond. I make my. choices. I'm where I am and what I am because of myself. Now here's the most wonderful thing. When you accept responsibility, you stop making excuses, you stop criticizing, you stop complaining, you stop blaming other people, and you start to feel, you start to feel powerful. We find there's a direct relationship between accepting responsibility and a feeling of control over your life. And there's a direct relationship between a sense of control and a positive mental attitude. So if you like yourself, and you have high levels of self-confidence and you accept total responsibility, you develop the mindset of the truly superior person. You develop the mindset of the leader. And no matter what happens, nothing can stop you. So the final principle of success is to say to yourself over and over again, I am unstoppable. I am unstoppable. I can do anything I put my mind to. I raised my kids with this, by the way. I told them I loved them no matter what, all the time they were growing up, so they've grown up with high levels of self-esteem. I told them you can do anything you put your mind to. They've grown up with high levels of self-confidence. I told them you're responsible for your own life. They've grown up with high levels of self-responsibility. And I've told them that you never quit. And they've grown up and they believe that they are unstoppable. So if you have those com that combination, if you like yourself, you have self-confidence, you accept responsibility, and you decide in advance that you will never give up, you will chop and change and try different things, and you will bounce back and re recoil, you'll be resilient, you'll have temporary defeats and failures, but you will never give up, then nothing can stop you from achieving the greatness for which you are created.